first of all, okay, look, we'll look this way out. Um, when did, uh, how did you find out? Because you weren't at the draft. How did you find out that you were the number two pick in the draft? I know ahead of time. I know that uh, back then, first of all, it was a different era uh, when it came to, you know, the, you know, the publicity that the draft gets. My goodness, it's, uh, it's a lot different now than it was back then. But I was told by uh, Houston and the Houston Rockets and the Indiana Pacers had a coin flip. And the winner of the, for the number one pick, and so 1983. So the winner was going to pick Ralph Sampson out of Virginia, and the, and the uh, loser or the, uh, the second pick was going to be me. And both those uh, uh, teams notified me that I would be the second pick. Plus, I was actually in New York for the draft. Oh, you were? So, well, like you were in a, uh, w w describe it. Like, were you in a back room or at the, at the draft? Yeah, there was a, uh, it was an event. It was uh, kind of a festive uh, uh, event, kind of like it is now, probably not as big. Uh, I, I don't know if it was on TV or not, it probably, it probably was not. But yeah, the guys that knew they were going to go in the first round or had a pretty good idea were all just sitting there waiting for names to be called. And then uh, it was in New York City. Uh, I think it was at Madison Square Garden. And did you go up on the podium and then shake the, uh, was it Larry O'Brien or was it, it was O'Brien, not Stern, right? There. Yeah, Stern wasn't there yet, uh, but yeah, you did. It was a little ceremony and then you had to go with, uh, and you got interviewed, and I believe it was on ESPN. Now back then, ESPN was just getting started. Yeah. I mean, it was not, of course, what it is today, but back then it was like, we're, we're on ESPN, what's ESPN? <laughs> so. And then, so in terms of knowing that you were going to be the second pick, how far in advance? Was it like weeks or days or a uh, month? Probably for me, uh, and every draft is different. Uh, this draft this year is a very strong draft, and, and arguably the draft that I was in was considered one of the, the, the high, higher end drafts as well. Uh, but uh, we, uh, you know, it was so long ago, I, I knew. We'll say two weeks ahead of time. Yeah. Well, what's that like knowing that of all the players who've ever played basketball in our area, that you were the highest pick of them all? What's that like? You know, it's, it's, um, it's pretty surreal. I think, I, you know, I think about it. I, even this morning I was looking at the paper and they had the, 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 uh, you know, some of the top guys that come out of St. Louis and, and that went on into the NBA and where they were drafted and what number. And, and to be the number two player picked, in the NBA draft is, 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 is pretty spectacular. It's, uh, I think about it every once in a while. And uh, it, um, you know, I mean, St. Louis has produced some great basketball players, especially in recent years. And, uh, and, and to be uh, the, the second player picked, I mean, it's really, um, uh, it's a great high honor. And, and uh, I, I sometimes look back and I'm surprised that, that I, that, uh, some of these guys that end up being great players weren't, weren't picked at least at number two or even number one. But uh, it's just a great honor, and it's, it's, it's fun to kind of reflect back and look. And, and, and this time of year rolls around especially. I, I know you did it for four years, but uh, how many scouts or how many people told you that the reason, the, the biggest reason that you went number two or a big part of it was that game against Ralph? You know, I don't know. I think, you know, I made a big jump between my junior and senior year in, uh, in college as far as how did my level of play. And back then, we were, uh, being on national TV was a big deal. CBS, uh, NBC, and there was just a, uh, one or two or three games a weekend on, and, and we happened, University of Missouri, we happened to be on, uh, we played North Carolina in St. Louis, and it was, uh, I guess, a CBS game. And then we played Ralph Sampson at the Meadowlands in New Jersey, and that was a nationally televised game as well. And I was, uh, I played extremely well in both those games. And so that might have something to do with it. I mean, I, I played very well against Ralph Sampson uh, there. We ended up losing the game, but I had one of my better games of the year. And do you remember the first fun thing you bought with your bonus money? <laughs> what'd you do? You had to do something fun. I know you probably were smart with a lot of it, but what'd you do? Well, the bonus money wasn't like it is today, Frank. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. I remember, uh, I remember going to the Pacers camp. I didn't even have a car. And so I remember uh, we were leaving camp, which was at Purdue University, and I went to Herb Williams, my teammate, and I said, Herb, man, I need to run you right back to Indianapolis. So I, uh, I get in Herb's car, and he gives me a ride back. I go, I didn't have a place to live. I said, Herb, Herb took me to his apartment complex, and I didn't, and that's why I just went in and rented a room. 
uh, an apartment where Herb lived, and he drove me to practice for a couple days until we got our face, first paycheck. And then I went and brought a, brought a uh, I think it was a Bronco truck. But yeah, we, you know, you, it's just like today, you gotta work for a couple of weeks before you get your, your paycheck. And, yeah. and, uh, and so when I got the first paycheck, I was able to buy a vehicle. And, uh, and it's funny, because I had no place to live, I had no transportation, if it wasn't for Herb Williams. Uh, then, uh, <laughs> I don't know, there was no Uber back then. Uh, so uh, you didn't buy any like jewelry or cars or, I mean, flashy cars or anything like that? No, I had a Porsche one time. Uh, that was my big flashy car, I guess. But uh, You could fit into a Porsche, okay? Yeah, yeah this particular model. Number, <laughs> yeah. All right, um, now, so you've seen Tatum because you watched him play against your nephew a lot. When you look at uh, Jason Tatum, what are you seeing? It's the same thing everybody else does. Just a phenomenal athlete. I think he's going to translate into a pro player very easily so long he's just so athletic and, and uh, you know it's, it's kind of fun at least in recent years you have David David Lee and then you have Bradley Beal and, and uh, you know Larry Hughes of course I remember going to SLU watching him play uh, when he was here and I know those they're they're somewhat um, uh, good friends and related to that uh, to that family so it's kind of fun to see how these guys are doing and I went to uh, Indianapolis a couple years ago I don't know if it was this year or the year before we went and watched Bradley Beal play uh, my son and I, and I uh, had a great game. It's just fun to see St. Louis guys succeed and have success in, in, uh, in this era of the NBA. Um, you, uh, so you saw, you seen Indiana play. The guy they compare him to is Paul George. Do you see a little Tatum, uh, see a little George and Tatum? You know, what was great about uh, Tatum was he, was he played for Duke, they were on TV every week, at least once a week, and so I got to watch him a lot this past season and, uh, and, and watch him uh, perform so well at the highest stage. I mean, you never know how a kid's going to perform, uh, you know, when, when he gets under that type of pressure and he's, he's been well coached and his dad, of course, and, and, and been around the game. You can see his, his uh, uh, emotional maturity is very high and uh, because we get the NBA, it's, it's, just, it's so much harder than college ever, ever, ever was by far. So. Uh, so I got to watch him play, and uh, I just think he's going to be a great NBA player. I hope he goes where they're projecting him uh, uh, as high as third is what I read. I hope he goes at least that high, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch him. And, and uh, you know, Bradley Beal, it's been fun to watch him as well. And, and uh, Dave Lee's been in the league, seems like, forever. And uh, so and those three guys right there, it's, just, it's been a, a, you know, being from St. Louis, it's been, kind of, it's been, it's been great to watch those guys. Is there just a part of you, though, thinking, hey, uh, Tatum's going to go three, so I'm still going to have the title? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think about that at all? Uh, I think that, uh, I guess that is, is something, uh, but not a lot. I, I look at uh, NBA success, and those guys, are, uh, you know, Bradley Beal and, and, and both David Lee, I mean, they, they, they're all stars. You know, I never achieved that level in the NBA. My career was cut short uh, because of an knee injury. I think I ended up playing uh, five or six years before that happened. But, uh, so I, I would uh, much rather have the honor of being a, a, an NBA All-Star <laughs> than, uh, than a high draft pick. Good stuff. That's perfect. Just think if you would have uh, stayed at Chaminade. They